Right guys, for those upgrading to iPhone 16 Pro this year, I thought I'd round up some of the biggest changes coming to the Pro models so that you have a rough idea on what to expect. Though I'll be frank with you guys, most of these changes don't actually excite me, but there is one rumoured change that, if true, would get me to upgrade immediately. I'll be throwing Timothy all my cash, so let's delve into that as well as the other rumours. So the first major change with the Pro models are the sizes. They'll be slightly bigger over the 15 Pro and Pro Max, with the regular model coming at 6.3 inches and the Pro Max now coming at a behemoth 6.9 inches and that's worrying because the current pro max is already a handful and we do know the 16 pro max is going to be slightly tall and wider so ergonomics is going to be thrown out the window yay now thankfully the thickness of the device isn't changing but it's going to be slightly heavier because of the bigger size though that's not a massive issue considering titanium gave us massive weight savings over the stainless steel pro models and so even if the 16 pro gains weight it should still be lighter than the likes of the 13 Pro and 14 Pro with their horrible stainless steel frame. I say horrible by the way because I hated how glossy the rails were on those phones but to my disappointment there have been rumours Apple's considering switching back to a glossy finish for some reason. I guess titanium in a matte finish looks too much like the aluminium rails on the peasant models or do they want the fancy glossy rails to stand out in the marketing so that of course more Apple sheep rush to buy these. Who knows, but I'm hoping this rumor's wrong. Anyways, the next change we've heard about with iPhone 16 are thinner bezels. Wow, what a revolutionary change that's going to make my life so much better. Okay, I'm being a killjoy, I apologize, but it's pretty hard for me to get excited about slightly thinner bezels. Yes, it might seem impressive initially, but then you just stop caring because it's just bezels unless you're a massive nerd who needs the slimmest bezels possible because that makes you go all tingly. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle where the change would be nice, but I also wouldn't upgrade for that alone. Anywho, Apple is said to be using border reduction structure technology, aka BRS, wow that sounds fancy, and this allows for a more compact and efficient layout of the circuitry under the display, and so that results in even slimmer bezels. It's actually pretty crazy Apple slimming down bezels two years in a row because remember last year, Apple reduced the 15 Pro bezels by using low injection pressure over molding, aka LiPo. And the display board on those phones were only 1.5 millimeters. And so even thinner than that is pretty crazy, but it's also just bezels and so I don't care. The third rumoured change for 16 Pro is specifically to do with the Pro Max because if there's one thing we can count on Apple changing every year, it's the cameras on these bad boys. Just like the 15 series, the Pro Max will have some exclusive camera features and nowadays it does seem like the iPhone has become a camera that happens to also be a good smartphone. So much of the marketing is focused around the imaging tech of these devices and Apple is going to continue pushing the boundaries of smartphone photography with iPhone 16. Wow, that line sounds like Apple's marketing team wrote it for me. You know what else they told me to say for you to subscribe to this channel, of course. I would greatly appreciate it and would bring you the latest about Apple right to subscription box. So please consider it. The button is below. We're trying to hit our next milestone of 16,000 subscribers. So join the Saran Bike Gang now. Anyways, the 16 Pro Max will apparently feature more advanced main camera that's 12% larger. It's a customized 40 megapixel Sony IMX903 sensor with a stack design for better performance. And the sensor will also include a 14 bit analog to digital converter for high quality image data conversion, whatever that means, and digital gain control for better dynamic range and noise control. So essentially, Apple just wants you to flex all this jargon to the Android plebs. I will say though, more than all this fancy ADC, DGC, ABCD, EFG, HIJ, K tech, I just want to see them try and resolve the limited focus distance with the 48 megapixel main sensor. Now, yes, I know a larger sensor naturally means it won't be able to focus on things that are close up. And of course we do have the ultra wide for macro shots anyways, but the ultra wide is much softer. So please Apple, do your voodoo magic and fix this. I'm not a camera nerd to advise you on how to solve this, but I just want this fixed immediately because it does get pretty annoying. Thankfully, it does seem the ultra wide itself is gonna be upgraded on the 16 Pro Max to 48 megapixels. So maybe it's not gonna be as soft anymore and the difference in quality between the main and the ultra wide is not gonna be as massive. If that's the case, then I would totally be content with using macro for close-up shots. So I'm really hoping that happens because that would be the only camera change 
I actually care about. Now, of course, with all these exciting camera changes, you're going to be eating into your storage. And so another upgrade that's rumored for iPhone 16 is more storage options. According to one rumor out of Korea, Apple's iPhone 16 models will be available with a new two terabyte storage tier, similar to, of course, the new iPad Pro. The move is said to be a result of Apple's apparent switch to higher density quad level cell NAND flash modules for higher storage models. This basically allows Apple to fit more storage into a smaller space, and it's less expensive than triple cell NAND modules, which are what Apple currently uses. Now, it is probably going to be $1,800, so get ready to sell your kidneys if you want the most expensive iPhone possible. But hey, if you have overkill storage needs, Apple might as well offer this to customers who can afford it. And so yes, it certainly would be nice to see two terabytes with iPhone 16. I'm also hoping the base iPhone 16 Pro bumps up to 256 gigs of storage. I vaguely remember seeing a rumor regarding this, but I guess because Apple really cares about keeping the base Pro at $999, it will unfortunately stay at 128 gigs of storage. But now we get to the final big change for iPhone 16 Pro that gets me very excited and could convince me to upgrade. Is it a foldable display? Is it 16 gigs of RAM? Is it a built-in holographic projector? No, it's better battery life. Yes, I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but let's be honest, guys. For most people's needs, the iPhone has kind of reached its peak features-wise. That's certainly been the case for me, and really the only complaint I have with my 14 Pro Max is the endurance. It's currently at 86% battery health and whilst I can make do with it when I'm at home and of course I can top up when needed with my wireless charger, when I'm out and about, it does become frustrating I have to rely on low power modes. I should not have battery anxiety in 2024, okay? And I know my 14 Pro Max isn't particularly new, but to be honest, I was never impressed by the endurance on this phone. I said this in my original review when the phone was brand new. The 13 Pro Max was the last battery beast from Apple. The 14 and 15 Pros weren't as impressive in comparison. And so I'm hoping the 16 Pros will be a return to form in this department. And so how glad was I to hear that according to Minchi Kuo, Apple's gonna use battery cells with increased energy density that helps them offer longer battery life whilst retaining the same battery size, which would be pretty impressive. But also there were some earlier rumors suggesting 16 Pro could use stacked batteries, which can result in a higher capacity and a longer lifespan. So that would be a win-win. There was also one rumor suggesting 16 Pro Max could feature 30 plus hours of battery life, which would be a significant upgrade over the 14 and 15 Pro Max. And so I'm praying to the Apple gods, this actually materializes. Now on the whole, I won't lie to you guys, the 16 Pro is not a revolutionary upgrade. It's yes, another minor tweak to the iPhone, just like the last few generations have been. But if it can bring genuine quality of life improvements with a better battery life and the better ultra wides, then I will definitely consider upgrading. Also remember with the new A18 Pro and its much more powerful neural engine, Apple plans to squeeze in as much AI as possible into these phones. And so more than the hardware, I'm looking forward to the software side of these phones. And we could see a preview of this with iOS 18 at WWDC, but I'm sure there's gonna be AI features exclusive to the 16 series that we won't see till September. So we shall wait and see guys. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.